morning, sixth graders. I hope your day is off to a great start. I hope you're not feeling any jet lag from yesterday. Now, jet lag is something that you would experience if you traveled a lot. If you're traveling across time zones and the time is different, maybe the date is different, then sometimes you can experience this jet lag feeling and it's just a temporary distress that's caused by traveling quickly over several different time zones. So you've not traveled different time zones, but I know you have had to jump back into your work this week. So hopefully you're not feeling too sluggish this morning. So let's take a look once again. This is a, a time zones take two for our lesson today. Now I did come up with a little sentence uh, over on the side that might help you because really with time zones, you just have to remember them in order. So if you go from the west to the east, you could use this little sentence, Henry and Patty made chocolate eclairs. Henry and Patty made chocolate eclairs. And using the first letter, it might help you to remember Hawaii, Alaska, Pacific, Mountain, Central, and Eastern. Remember, there are just six time zones in the United States, but how many are there in the entire world? There are 24 in the entire world. So six, thankfully, is all we have to learn this year. But you never know, your job someday may require you to travel and you will probably become quite familiar with some of these time zones. Now remember, the sun, I know some of you are mocking me right now, my artistry, but the sun, they say, rises in the east and sets in the west. Now we know the sun is stationary. It doesn't move. We move around the sun, but that's kind of a terminology that has been said. The sun rises in the east and sets in the west. So because of that, right now, as the sun is shining brightly on North Carolina, thankfully, it is about 9, 10 here in our classroom, and that's Eastern time. So we would say 9, 10 a.m., and it would be earlier Central time, so it would be 8, 10, 7, 10. Of course, that's not correct because that's one of the ones from our book, 6, 10, 5, 10, 4, 10 a.m. So the sun is rising here, and then it's going to, uh, of course, progress over the United States. Now, today in your lesson, it takes the United States and shows you the breakdown of time zones, and they're in the purple in the brown box. You see the Eastern time, and then in the brown, you see Central time. In the green, you see the Mountain time, and then there in the pink, it shows the Pacific time. So, number one, letter A, it says in Pacific time, it is noon. So therefore, what time would it be? Alaska and Hawaii time, you know, it's gonna be earlier. So if it's noon, which is 12 o'clock Pacific time, it would be 11 o'clock a.m. And be sure that you're writing that on your charts, please, the a.m. and the p.m., that is important. And it would be 10 o'clock a.m. in Hawaii. So if we're in noon Pacific, then it's gonna be a little later here. So mountain time would be one o'clock p.m., two o'clock p.m. for central time. And of course that one would be three o'clock p.m. So hopefully the chart is pretty easy for you. Do look at letter C. On letter C it says in Hawaii it's midnight. And that means in Alaska time it would be one o'clock a.m. So it's going to go marching 1 o'clock a.m., 2 o'clock a.m., 3 o'clock a.m., and so on. Let's look at one or two of our story problems. Now notice in the directions. It says answer the questions, use the map that is given above. If it is 6 o'clock p.m. in Atlanta, what time is it in Salt Lake City? All right, so 6 o'clock p.m. I'm going to look at my chart. 6 o'clock in Atlanta would be Eastern Time. And if I'm moving to Salt Lake City, Salt Lake City is the capital of Utah. So I'm moving over to Mountain Time. So that's two hours difference. And of course it's earlier, so it would be four o'clock p.m. We'll do one more. Letter B, if it is 1.15 a.m. in Little Rock, what time would it be in Buffalo? All right, Little Rock is in Arkansas, and I believe that is Central Time Zone. And then you're going to Buffalo, Buffalo, New York. That's Eastern time zone. So it's gonna be a little later in New York. So it goes from 1.15 a.m. to 2.15 a.m. So I hope that helps you just a little bit on sections one and two. Let's take a quick peek at our story problem. Section four, letter A. It says the average high temperature in London during August is 22 degrees Celsius. 
Well, we don't work a whole lot with Celsius here in the United States, so I'm curious. What time, what temperature, excuse me, would that be in London around the August time? Convert to the Fahrenheit scale, find the answer to the nearest whole degree. So this is why I wanted to work this problem for you because it's, again, it's that rounding concept. So 22 degrees Celsius in London in August, I use F equals 9 this times C plus 32. I've started working for you here. 9 this times 22 over 1. We cannot cancel. So we're going to say 9 times 22, and that gives us 198 over 5. Now I did a short division problem here. 5 goes into 198, 39, and 3 fifths. 3 fifths is equal to 6 tenths, which is greater than a half. So that rounds up to 40 degrees. And then what's my final step? Add 40 plus 32. Don't forget that. So your answer is 72 degrees Fahrenheit. Sounds like a pretty comfortable temperature for August. I bet our August temperatures here in North Carolina are higher than that. And you're going to do something very similar in section B as well on conversion. One more thing I wanted to point out before I sign off on arithmetic today. I've been noticing as I'm checking, a few of you are getting a little slack in your decimals. Remember, those decimals are so important that they make all the difference in the world in a problem. So for letter A on section 8, odd means to multiply, but when I change that to multiply, remember I have to take that decimal in two spots. So I'm multiplying 0.1783 and then count over four spots in your product. Don't forget that. And then for letter B, look right here, 180%. That equals one decimal eight. So just be sure that you're getting those decimals in the right spot before you multiply. Guys, I hope you have a great day. I miss seeing you so much. And I know that this has not been easy. And it started maybe at first to be a little exciting. And now it's not quite as exciting to do your work at home without your classmates surrounding you. But you know what? It's the circumstances that we've been given. We're all in this ship together. Let's give it the best that we can. Try to have a positive attitude. Work hard for mom and dad. Don't argue because I know sometimes that's a tendency. Remember, I have three kids of my own as well. But just try to give it your best and ask the Lord to help you. You know what? To find the positives throughout the day is probably not taking as long to do your work. So you're getting more time to spend uh, maybe doing some things that you like to do. And just find the positives and give your best. And then Lord willing, before we know it, we'll be past this. And we can look back and think of all the things we've learned. I hope you have a great day.